is Stephen Olsen and this is my Manchester United youth review. Obviously, I'm in a different location today, but we're still getting the video over to you. So, um, I'm not doing this in order. This is going to go in a slightly different order than it normally goes. And the reason for that is because the FA Youth Cup is the biggest thing for under 18 footballers in this country. It is the Champions League for English under 18 side. And Monday night saw United's current crop of scholars take on Southampton at Old Trafford. Uh, United was the heavy, heavy favourites going into the game and possibly one of three or four clubs that should have been looking at winning the whole thing. Liverpool, Chelsea, City being the others. Now the first surprise of the night came by way of the team sheet. Roshan Williams heavily expected to partner Terrell Warren at the heart of defence. Was missing due to a knee injury that he picked up uh, possibly over the weekend. And Tahit Chung was left out as Coach McKenna favoured a 4-2-3-1 formation over the 4-3-3 that we've pretty much played all season. Ethan Hamilton coming in um, alongside Whelan in midfield and Callum Gribbin taking the number 10 spot up front. Now what this led to was uh, it led to um, the two playmakers, the midfield three being broken up that's been so effective all season with Angel and DJ Buffonge and Cal Whelan and now DJ and Angel was played on the left wing and on the right wing and what that did is it split those two up and those two being split up has caused those problems the, the problems that it's caused is that the one twos, the interplay, the, the, the one touch that they play in and around each other is how United get into the box, it's how United get into and behind the opposition and when you put them both on the wing they're not wingers they're attacking midfielders and when you put them on the wing, they're not likely to go around the back and get the byline and get a cross in across the face of goal. That's not what they do. So they was moved out of position to accommodate this new formation. And because of that, that fluidity that we had didn't really do it for us. And because of that, not really just because of that, but a symptom of that was when Southampton sat back, which they did, and they sat back in their box, let alone their, their half. They sat back in two banks and invited us on. They had everyone apart from a striker behind the ball, and all they was looking to do was hit balls into the channels, try and get over the top for this big number nine that they had. And I thought Warren and O'Connor, I thought, had a fantastic game, dealt with him superbly. But that was their main method of trying to relieve pressure and trying to start attacks. It was quick counter, direct counter attacks. Using the centre forward they had like an old John Fashionu that Wimbledon would have used. Um, not really effective. United completely dominated territory and possession. And we did create several chances. Angel went put one over the bar from about seven yards out in the first half. Which when he puts away, you're potentially looking at a different story. But that is the story of Manchester United's season, isn't it, at the moment? Um, but we struggled. We struggled creating regular chances inside the box. And it wasn't until the emergence of Chong um, off the bench that United broke the deadlock. As Latan-esque left-footed control with his back to goal brings the ball down out of nothing from a Kenyan cross and then spins and hits it over his shoulder in a vintage Mark Hughes style. Um, fantastic goal, smashing it into the top left corner of the Stretford end goal. Uh, chances then came thick and fast for the Reds but he was unable to really convert anything into a goal scoring opportunity. Um, and then a moment of madness slash magic from Saints and their back level. And you're thinking, right, okay, it's extra time, yeah? No, then this happened. United then flooded forward, looking to get back into the game, but it was too late. United crashed out of the FA Youth Cup, and for several of them lads, that's their last opportunity at getting anything in the FA Youth Cup um, at under-18 level, as they're going to be too old next season. For several of the lads, they're going to have another crack at it next season. But this is a blow. Um, this was a really fancy team going into it this year. Everyone was pretty high, especially with the form that we've seen in the league and some of the goals that we've scored in the league, that this was going to be a class of 17, a vintage year for Manchester United's academy. Uh, but that's not going to be the case. So now, time to focus a little bit on the league, focus a little bit on individual player development and see what um, 2017 brings for them. Um, they've got to use that disappointment as fuel. I spoke to a few of the lads in the aftermath of it and pissed off is the general attitude of all of the lads. Um, let's hope that they, they, they channel that into the right areas now and they go on and they, um, they forget all about this and go and have good careers at Manchester United. Right then, um, that's the 18s covered. They've got one more game, which is West Brom tomorrow. And then there's a, a little bit of a winter break, about four weeks or so. Um, but the 23s have been in action. Um, last Friday, we played Chelsea at Aldershot, uh, losing 3-1 at Axel 2 and Zabi, scoring the only goal from a wonderful Sean Goss cross. Um, some left foot that Sean Goss has got, I tell you that. Um, 
Nicky Bot got a little bit experimental playing three at the back and it didn't really pay off. Uh, obviously going down 3-1 to so a really good Chelsea side to be honest. thought Goss was probably man of the match. Um, kept it ticking nicely in midfield. Looked a class above what we was facing in Chelsea. But overall there was a, a too strong a side for us and we've got nobody taking the chances that we're able to create. And it's, it's symptomatic of the entire season in the under-23s, isn't it? Um... Darty and Barlow came off the bench uh, to make their first debut at this level, uh, first appearances at this level, um, and there's not much else to say on that front, really. The reserves were also in action last night at Lee Sports Village against Sparta Prague in the Italian, Italian, in the International Premier League Cup, uh, winning 2-0, um, Devontae Redmond and Josh Harrop scoring a birthday boy goal. Um, cracking goal as well a wonderful pass from Matty Willock um, Harrop jumps on it takes it around the keeper and slots it home really nice goal uh, the reserves are um, reserves are struggling a little bit in the league now and I think that's again symptomatic of what we've saw the whole season with them with the best players being loaned out and there being nothing coming down from the first team in terms of eligible players like Memphis or Fosu Mensa and even players coming back to get fitness can you imagine Bastian Schweinsteiger in his team um, I think the likes of Axel and Goss and obviously Joe Riley's been injured now but would have really benefited from going out on loan themselves and probably Josh Harrop as well I think um, and Willock there's loads of these players that are far too good to be playing Premier League 2 level they need to go out and show what they can do in the real football world all of them should be looking at Championship and possibly even Premiership they're easily good enough and the other 17s played against Everton at Altrincham on Wednesday night with a few trialists um Indy Boonham scored a cracking solo goal. And um, we have got some exciting news for the transfer divs amongst us. There's a, a young lad called Deshaun Redan uh, from Ajax. Um, not sure if he's been signed just yet. He's at the club on trial and it, it, he's expected to sign. So I think this will be concluded in the very near future. Um, Holland's been a bit of a happy hunting ground for United's academy in recent years with the likes of Indy Boone and uh, Chong and Fosu Mensa coming through. So if, any, if this lad's anything like the calibre that we've seen so far from those, then we're on to an absolute winner, aren't we? Uh, this continues the trend of getting the world-class talent from around the world uh, and pairing that with local, homegrown, uh, best of the bunch that we can find in England. So it's not a bad strategy from United's academy. We have lacked a little bit in firepower from proper number nines. And from what I've seen doing a little bit of YouTube scouting with this guy, this lad is a proper number nine. Some of his movement and uh, the way he finishes the ball reminds me very much of a, a 1996 vintage original Ronaldo, which has sent me on like a little bit of a YouTube ride, making sure that, yeah, uh, yeah, they are, they are the same, actually. So I've watched a ton of videos on both of them this morning, and the way he gets in behind the defence, the pace and power, he's, he's obviously not the same level of ability as Ronaldo, and I doubt he ever will be the same level of ability as Ronaldo. But there's just a, a similarity in style between Redan and Ronaldo. Very aggressive, not one to uh, shirk out with tackle. He's had a few red cards at Ajax. This lad looks like he's the real business. So um, we haven't given any under-16 strikers a scholarship for next season going into the under-18. So it looks like, like this lad will be the striker for the under-18 side next season. Very excited to see how he turns out and how he develops. So... Um, if we see him in the 16s or we see him in the 17s or even, you know, he might be brought into the 18s this season to get a taste of it. Um, obviously, I'll keep you updated and I'll let you know. Um, but very exciting. And just to finish it off on, a, on a, a slightly different note, last week I mentioned that there was a player that left Manchester United to go to City because he was offered a pro deal and only offered a scholarship at United. And that was wrong. Um, I've spoken to the player since and he tells me that he was offered the same deal at United as he was at City. United took a little bit longer to come up with the offer and he felt like Manchester City was the better place for him. So there you go. Um, good luck to the lad. Um, well, one thing I do know is that England's going to have a wonderful team in the next few years with uh, some of the talent that's coming through at the moment. Can't wait to see what that does. Uh, the likes of Jadon Sancho at City. Um, he was there on Monday night. Um, probably supporting some of his mates because a lot of them are mates uh, I think Jaden and San, uh, Jaden and Angel are pretty good mates off the pitch so uh, it's good to see that really because I think a lot of fans on Twitter would probably see their arse with it but if you think back George Best and Mike Summerby was good mates there's no reason they can't be mates just because someone plays for another team look at a lot of the international lads I'm sure that they behind closed doors are, are really good mates um, so got no issue with it um, 
And that's it. That'll do for this week's youth review. Uh, any questions or comments, hit me over at Reddit or get them in the, the comments below. Um, anyone you'd like me to talk about because there's going to be a four-week break coming up soon where there's going to be no matches. So for the youth review, I'm probably going to do player profiles or ones that got away or something like that. Anything that you like, any ideas that you've got for what you'd like me to see me doing on the youth review for the next four weeks after this weekend once we uh, get into the Christmas break period. Um, let me know in the comments or hit me up on Reddit. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. We are that close to um, 25,000. And if I get 25,000 before Christmas Day, I'm going to be giving one of my subscribers a signed Ryan Giggs Reebok boot. I don't have it on me to show you now, but head over to my Twitter and you can see a photograph of it there. Or look at the last couple of videos where it's been shown. So uh, again, thank you for watching and I'll see you in a bit.